Diddy Kong was introduced as the apprentice of Donkey Kong, one of his biggest fans that strives to be a video game hero much like DK. You first encounter him within Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo, with DK on a quest to get his stolen bananas back from King K. Rule and the Kremlings. The first level is jungle hijinks and not too far from DK's empty banana stash is a frantic Diddy Kong stuck inside a barrel. But once you toss this barrel and free him, you not only have a trusted companion to join you on your adventure, but a whole other playable character with unique skills. How did Rare come up with this new Kong, and how did they go with the idea to put DK on the back burner and have Diddy star in his own title? And what about his girlfriend, Dixie Kong? Let's get into it. I'm the Mentalk, and welcome to Origin Oracle, everyone. Kick back, grab a snack, and let's head back in time. <laughs> So as I mentioned before, Diddy Kong debuted in the Super Nintendo classic Donkey Kong Country, released in November 1994. My previous Donkey Kong video is a pretty deep dive into the history of Rare and how they managed to develop such a title, so this video is going to focus more on the origins of Diddy himself. There's a whole four-page backstory within the instructions manual for Donkey Kong Country, which provides some context on why Diddy is stuck in a barrel in the first place. It's a dark and stormy night, but somebody's still got to watch over Donkey Kong's banana stash. With Diddy as his apprentice, Donkey Kong, in his condescending voice, tells him to take point on the night watch, leaving him alone in the darkness to ward off any threats. And of course, in that moment, the Kremlings ambush poor Diddy, who tries to fight back with his signature summer assault move, but they turn out to be too much for him and end up sealing him within a nearby barrel before discarding it into the jungle. In the morning, Donkey Kong and Cranky Kong discover both his horde of bananas and Diddy are gone, which begins the adventure of Donkey Kong Country. And even though we don't see these events play out within the game, unless you're playing the Game Boy Advance port, I find it cool that they didn't go with the idea of Diddy being captive the entire time. Also, this is another minor detail, but the barrel is labeled DK, which lines up with the story pretty nicely since the Kremlings presumably grabbed the nearest barrel while they were raiding the banana horde. Anyway, with Diddy rescued, this duo goes on their adventure to get all their bananas back, but instead of just having another DK to play with, Rare gave both of these Kongs their own unique abilities. Donkey Kong is the powerhouse of the two, able to take down the more brutish enemies in the Kremlin army, and if positioned properly, can reveal hidden stashes in the ground by using his hand slap. In comparison, Diddy is built as the speedier, more agile Kong, and was given the ability to sprint faster, jump higher, and actually has a smaller hitbox than DK. But he has a hard time taking down the bigger enemies like armies, crushes, and clumps. So while the manual may refer to Diddy as a Donkey Kong wannabe, he has quite a few useful abilities at his disposal. I've always been drawn to using the speedier types in video games anyway. Mentok has an obsession with Amy? Who told you that? Alright, so we know the team at Rare created Diddy Kong, but for what purpose? Well, before he got his final design, this character was originally meant to be a redesign for Donkey Kong Jr. Thanks to the lead designer of Donkey Kong Country, Greg Mails, we have an idea of what transpired before we got these versions of the characters. So first, Rare pitched the idea of Donkey Kong vs Super Wario, a story where Wario turns Mario to stone and steals a time machine Mario invented in order to try to rule Nintendo Land. Whatever Nintendo Land is. So I guess Wario is trying to take over that amusement park from that one Wii U game. I've been dying for a Nintendo Land port or some type of sequel because this game was so much fun. So a parrot informs Donkey Kong of the situation and he races off to help. But Nintendo ended up rejecting this concept since they wanted Donkey Kong to square up with a new set of villains. And this led to the follow-up pitch from Rare called Donkey Kong and the Golden Bananas. Much like the plot of the final game, the Kremlings steal Donkey Kong's golden bananas, but this time around, Donkey Kong is the one that gets ambushed by a Kremlin instead named Corporal Krizzle. This name sounds like something straight out of the early 2000s. A shizzle, my nizzle. <laughs> I'm telling you, Julie. So a character called Grandpa Kong tracks down Donkey Kong and encourages him to go retrieve the golden banana, which leads to DK summoning Donkey Kong Jr. to help. And I'm sure it's pretty obvious, but Grandpa Kong here would eventually become Cranky Kong. But Nintendo wasn't too keen on the idea of using such a drastically different design for Jr., so Rare was given a choice to make it look more like his original design, or make this design a brand new character. So obviously they went with the latter, with Rare believing the design fit the rebooted DK world they were developing. And so, Dinky Kong was born. Who? Mentok, you're so silly. But seriously, this is not me making a joke. Greg Mail stated in a 2010 interview that Rare had a ton of names that were suggested by their team, with Dinky Kong being one of them. 
In fact, they settled with Dinky Kong, but were advised by their legal teams to change it to Diddy, which was most likely derived from the English slang for small. It can also refer to a woman's breast, but I'm gonna assume that that's not what they had in mind for our boy Diddy here. I couldn't find any more details on this legal suggestion, but maybe they were trying to avoid a potential lawsuit from Jackson Guitars due to their Jackson Dinky guitar. Let me know if you have any other guesses in the comments. And if you're curious about other potential names for Diddy, Rare came up with Diet DK, DK Light, and Tichy Kong. And as for the name Dinky Kong, it would end up being used for the Japanese version of Kitty Kong, who would make his first appearance in Donkey Kong Country 3. So with a new hero established, Diddy Kong would be fully implemented within Donkey Kong Country, initially to serve as that extra hit for the player. Rare took inspiration from the mushroom power-up from Mario games with this in mind, and the goal was to implement a health system without cluttering up the screen with hearts or health bars. So very early on in the game, the player will discover that Diddy can take a hit for DK, and vice versa. So much like a lot of the Mario cast, there was some confusion with Diddy's relation to Donkey Kong for a while. As of right now, he's considered Donkey Kong's best friend and companion, but back in the 90s, he was referred to as DK's nephew several times. Ah oh, shit. Here we go again. The English version of Super Smash Bros. for the N64 states in Donkey Kong's profile that Donkey Kong and Mario started out as arch rivals, but they've patched things up in recent years. These days, DK spends his time searching the jungle for bananas instead of kidnapping beautiful maidens. Huh. So is the DK in the original Smash a toy version of Cranky? Okay, let me not start this up again. So the last... <laughs> So the last line in his profile says that the other members of the Kong family have cashed in on DK's fame as well, including his favorite nephew, Diddy. Strangely enough, on Rare's old website around the time of Donkey Kong 64, they also refer to Diddy Kong as Donkey Kong's nephew. But then, in 2003, the Prima Games Guide for the GBA version of Donkey Kong has them as cousins. My inner conspiracy theorist thinks everyone associated with the Donkey Kong franchise was actively trying to confuse fans on his family. Get some help. The response to Donkey Kong Country was overwhelmingly positive as the game broke several sales records in a short amount of time. With all the new and cutting edge technology for 3D graphics at their disposal, Rare knew very early on that they would be making a sequel to Donkey Kong Country. But this time around, they would remove Donkey Kong from the picture, intending to surprise players by not only making Diddy Kong the star, but introducing a brand new character to take the place of DK. Donkey Kong! Zuh! Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest. Get it? This game was released a year after the original Donkey Kong Country, putting Diddy Kong at the forefront. This time, the story was slimmed down to two pages, with a captive DK sitting right in the center. Our story begins with Donkey Kong relaxing on the beach, drinking a banana milkshake. Now I'm craving one. As he dozes off to sleep, Cranky gives him a nice bonk on the head to chastise him for lazing around so much. Even stars get time off, muttered Donkey Kong rubbing his head. I never did, said Cranky proudly. Whisking off maidens and throwing barrels around the place seven days a week I was. We also find out from Cranky that Diddy is off somewhere with his new girlfriend before wandering off to finally let DK sleep. So night approaches and Donkey Kong still hasn't returned home, leading Diddy and his new girlfriend Dixie Kong to go out to go look for him, only to find a note laying on his smashed beach chair. To the yeller-bellied, land Kong family, ha! We've got the big monkey. If you want him back, you scurvy dogs, you'll have to hand over the banana horde. Captain K. Rule. So Diddy, Dixie, Cranky, and Wrinkly Kong, Cranky's wife who makes her first appearance in this game, all ponder on how to handle the situation, but Diddy steps forward to take on the challenge of stopping K. Rule and rescuing Donkey Kong. Cranky is a bit doubtful that Diddy can do it alone, but Dixie agrees to go alongside him, and so begins Diddy's conquest. Cranky is also quoted here saying that this story is even worse than Donkey Kong Country's. We need to get you your own game again. So this time around, Rare wanted to focus on a pirate theme for this game, with much of the level design being influenced by the golden age of piracy that occurred in the late 1600s and early 1700s. This includes multiple pirate ship levels and more of a focus on the use of water within the course of the game. They also opted to make this game a little more challenging than the original. Econ Country 2, Diddy's Conquest. It's even tougher than the original. Greg Mails admitted it was risky by taking Donkey Kong out of the picture and going with Diddy as the lead instead. And with the introduction of Dixie, the team wanted a character with even more unique skills. And while we're at it, let's talk about Dixie Kong. This origin oracle will be for her as well. Rare had the idea to implement a female character before they came up with her design. 
but by introducing her ponytail into her final design, they were able to come up with several gameplay mechanics that revolved around that hairstyle. So to create Dixie, they started with Diddy Kong's model and added a ponytail, new clothes, and other feminine features. <clears throat> uh. Smash. This time, Rare came up with nearly 50 different names for their new character like Daisy, Dandy, Dippy, and Ducky. Oh, and let's not forget Dicky Licky. What? And they almost went with the name Diddy in at one point before finally settling for Dixie. Once again, Nintendo let Rare do their thing with this title, having even less involvement this time around, but Miyamoto did have some input on Dixie's character design. Diddy has an identical moveset, keeping his original speed and jumping abilities from the first game. Dixie, on the other hand, was given the ability to hover with her ponytail, giving the player a more diverse moveset this time around between the two characters. Rare would also add team-up abilities, allowing the characters to pick each other up and throw one another to reach inaccessible places and hidden items. So after many trials and tribulations, Diddy and Dixie find themselves on Crocodile Isle, where Captain K. Rule awaits on his airship. The two battle it out with their nemesis. Also, I think it's a nice touch with DK strung up on the ceiling here. After a long battle, Diddy and Dixie are victorious and manage to release DK so he can get the final uppercut on K. Rule, launching him into the water below to be devoured by the sharks. So the day is saved, and if you've been hunting down these video game hero coins, Cranky will weigh Diddy up as a hero against the big leagues like Yoshi and Mario himself. Link! You must find me! There's a secret area within Crocodile Isle known as the Lost World that contains a boss level called Crocodile Core, the power source of the entire island. Here, Diddy and Dixie can take on Captain K. Rule one last time, who's still wet and covered in reeds from his time with the sharks. But after dodging all the blasts from his blunderbuss, he'll explode, sending him flying once again, putting Crocodile Isle out of commission as Diddy, Dixie, and Donkey Kong overlook its destruction on the cliffside, ending this game once and for all. We do witness K. Rule laughing on a raft as he escapes into the sunset, but once he's gone, this is one of the most peaceful screens in this game. Yo, why is your girl riding on his back though? Even after taking these risks on new characters picking up the mantle, Diddy's Conquest would become the second best-selling game of 1995, only beaten by Yoshi's Island, with this game often heralded as the best title in the Donkey Kong Country trilogy. And I wholeheartedly agree with this opinion just on the music alone. David Wise returns to compose the soundtrack for this game, and some of these bangers are timeless. Tell me your favorite song from this game in the comments and why it's Forest Interlude. So after the success of Donkey Kong Country 2, Rare handed off the next project to a brand new team comprised of Andrew Collard and Paul Weaver as the designers, who would take on the task of creating Donkey Kong Country 3. Something wild is coming. Something you wouldn't expect. <laughs> Why? Well cool, with Donkey Kong saved, I can't wait to roam around as the king of the jungle again. Just kidding, Donkey Kong gets kidnapped again. Donkey Kong Country 3, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble, released for the Super Nintendo in 1996. So once again, Rare decided to throw a curveball and had Donkey Kong Country 3 star Dixie Kong, this time with her massive baby cousin, Kitty Kong. Diddy and Dixie both get more screen time than DK in his own trilogy. But I'll once again refer to this lovely instructions manual for this butt-clenching lore. So months after their last victory over Captain K. Rule, the Kongs are still celebrating with lazy-ass DK hanging out in his hammock sipping banana milkshakes. One morning, Dixie decides to go visit Diddy and notices his room was completely empty with only a note left behind. Dear Dixie, gone exploring the island with DK. Back tomorrow, Diddy. Though Dixie thinks it's odd at first that these two would go any further than the beach because they are lazy, she decides to wait until the next day to see if they turn up. They didn't. So Dixie takes it upon herself to search for the duo, asking the other Kongs about their whereabouts. Monkey Kong, the coolest Kong on the island, tells her that the only visitor he's had all week was Kitty Kong, who's sitting in the room chewing on a tire by the way. So she decides to take her strong baby cousin out on the adventure to help her track down DK and Diddy. Gameplay wise, Dixie's controls are more or less the same, with Kitty Kong playing a little bit more like Donkey Kong from the first Donkey Kong Country, but he has a few abilities from Diddy, like carrying the barrel in front of him like a shield and having a longer roll distance. So while the Kremlings are the villains again, this time around they have a new leader named Chaos. Okay, let's be real, Chaos is not their ruler. It's a robot of some sort being controlled by the true mastermind, Baron K. Rulenstein. Or is it Stein? It's pronounced Frankenstein. I gotta love how he keeps coming back with a different name and title every time. But look at that, DK and Diddy were being used to power this robot 
the whole time. Okay, Dr. Robotnik, I see you. I don't know, I thought that one was clever. By the way, there's a new group introduced here known as the Brothers Bear that assists Dixie and Kitty on their journey. And it's fully comprised of bears with names starting with the letter B. While it's not fully confirmed, I have to wonder if this group is what inspired the creation of Banjo from Banjo-Kazooie. So once again, you're gonna have to go on a collectathon to unlock the true ending of the game, grabbing all the bonus coins and DK coins. Oh yeah, and I hope you've been freeing these banana birds during your adventure too. You can then take the fight to K. Rulingstein's submarine, where Dixie and Kitty take him on in another epic boss fight, but just like the other games, he manages to escape. Get all the DK coins and Funky will send you to secret levels that contain the last few banana birds, and after freeing every single one, Dixie and Kitty get an audience with the Banana Queen, ending their adventure once and for all as this giant bird drops a massive eggshell on K. Rulingstein. It's kind of anticlimactic, I know, but I'll be honest with you guys, I never had the patience or fortitude to get to the ending of this game. Dixie Kong's Double Trouble, like the previous titles, broke over a million copies sold, with many fans arguing that this game was hindered by being more of the same. Not to mention, the Nintendo 64 hit the market two months prior to the release of this, so the release of true 3D graphics are said to have overshadowed this title a little bit. Personally, I find the game enjoyable, so I won't add to the discourse, but if you're subscribed to Nintendo Switch Online, it's pretty easy to get your hands on this game. Before I move on, they completely massacred Dixie in the television series. I'll walk the rest of the way with my buddy Dix! <laughs> oh shit! So in the new age of full 3D graphics and the rise of the Nintendo 64, of course Rare would work on Donkey Kong's next big title, Donkey Kong 64, which released in November 1999. And while Diddy is a playable character within the game, Donkey Kong returns to center stage. So instead, the N64 game I actually want to talk about would come out two years before this, once again with Diddy Kong as the star. Diddy Kong Racing! Diddy Kong Racing. Around this time, the team at Rare split up to create two new games. The first was a fighting game, which would be Killer Instinct Gold, the third entry in their Killer Instinct series, and the other was a racing game. But it didn't start off as Diddy Kong Racing as we know it. So the year is 1996, and Rare wanted to explore other game genres and branch out. Strangely enough, there was a rumor that the game's initial concept was going to be a real-time strategy game with a caveman time travel theme, but Lee Musgrave, who worked as a 3D artist on Diddy Kong Racing, has confirmed in a 2022 interview that this wasn't true, but for some reason it's still listed in the development section on the Wikipedia page. Hmm, maybe my high school teachers are right about Wikipedia this whole time. Musgrave does mention that he worked on a few catapult models for a completely unrelated strategy game in the style of Command and Conquer for about a month, before the team decided to move on to their 3D racing game. So technically speaking, the two have no relation. The racing game itself was planned as a follow-up to one of Rare's old NES titles from 1988, RC Pro-Am. They introduced all new characters to be featured and titled the game Pro-Am 64 which would be slotted as their holiday title for 1997. But the team felt that this intellectual property and the new characters weren't enough to stand on their own. So they came up with the idea to rebrand with some Nintendo razzle-dazzle and included Diddy Kong as the feature. Nintendo was all in with the idea and according to Musgrave, he says, quote, Nintendo enjoyed the fact that we chose Diddy Kong over Donkey Kong. I think that it was us trying to build on the fact that Diddy was ours and DK was theirs. And so Diddy Kong Racing was born. And even though Diddy is the star character, there's a whole squad of new personalities from Rare. This would also be the very first appearance of two major characters that would go on to get their own games, Banjo the Bear and Conquer the Squirrel. Or Conquer in his sober days. I, and I'll probably see you sometime next week. I gotta go home. I'll, I'll go this way. Oh. There's even a little story to go along with it, and since this is the Mentalk channel, you know I have to go over it. So Diddy Kong is chilling at the treehouse and receives a letter from a faraway land asking for his help. It's from his old friend Timber the Tiger, who's having some trouble at home with an evil intergalactic pig wizard named Wizpig, who is attempting to take over his island. Diddy races off to help, but not before recruiting some of his friends, Banjo and Conker. A curious Kremlin named Crunch is suspicious of Diddy's sudden movements and decides to go after him, which explains why he's playable. Meanwhile, on Timber's island, the inhabitants band together while anticipating Diddy's arrival, which leads into the events of the game. And yes, we're defeating this evil wizard pig in races, just to clarify. This game set itself apart from other racing titles like Mario Kart because the characters have multiple vehicles they can use depending on the race, like cars, hovercrafts, and planes. 
The main scenario mode is called Adventure Mode, where the player wins races and grabs collectibles to get the opportunity to face off against the boss in each of the main four worlds. And all of this leads up to the final race with Wizpig, who, once defeated, takes it like a sore loser and terrorizes the cast on the beach while they're celebrating. And using his spaceship, he heads back into space, leading to the final world, Future Funland. So Diddy and his friends will have to complete more races in this area before getting the chance to face Wizpig, who pulls out all the stops this time, but once again, the team is victorious. I guess all the commotion from the race causes Wizpig's rocket to malfunction, sending him into the cold, dark abyss of space. But we do see his spaceship fly by at the very end as he laughs his way off screen, so I guess Wizpig has been terrorizing other planets ever since. This game was insanely popular, selling 4.5 million copies worldwide. But unfortunately, there still hasn't been a sequel to this game. Allegedly, two sequels were planned, one known as Diddy Kong Pilot for the Game Boy Advance, which got leaked online in 2011 by a former Rare employee. The other game was Donkey Kong Racing for the GameCube, first announced at E3 2001, which would have built on the Diddy Kong Racing formula while including more of the Kongs as playable characters. But in 2003, Rare would be purchased by Microsoft, which made their relationship with Nintendo a little awkward. In 2004, Diddy Kong Racing Adventure was a sequel game pitched by Climax Studios for the GameCube. This project also never saw the light of day. P2P Online, a video game archivist on YouTube, managed to get his hands on a prototype a few years back, and talks a little bit more on this if you'd like to check his video out. But long story short, for reasons unknown, Nintendo decided not to pick up this pitch. It wouldn't be until 2007 where we'd finally see Nintendo acknowledge Diddy Kong Racing again, with the Nintendo DS remake, Diddy Kong Racing DS. And they even managed to get Rare to come back to develop this title, since Microsoft wasn't in the handheld market. So I guess they deemed this one fair game for Rare to work on. And while the game is more or less the same, just with a coat of fresh paint, they would replace the Banjo and Conker characters with Dixie Kong and her younger sister, Tiny Kong. So I guess Nintendo wasn't a fan of Conker's alcohol problem. But this title would be the last time we'd see Diddy Kong take the spotlight. But of course, he's far from an abandoned character. He and Dixie would receive the Mario spin-off treatment, being featured in multiple sports titles, but they'd also be playable characters in other spin-off titles like DK King of Swing, DK Jungle Climber, and the Donkey Konga series. Diddy Kong would be inducted into the Smash roster with the release of Super Smash Bros. Brawl in 2008, and has kept his slot as a fighter ever since. And all of this was prior to the 2010 revival of the Donkey Kong Country series, with Retro Studios developing Donkey Kong Country Returns. For the first time in the series since the first Donkey Kong Country game, DK and Diddy team up once again to get their banana horde back from the Tiki Tak tribe. So while there isn't a huge story to write home about here, this game does manage to give some focus on DK and Diddy's friendship, which has seemingly come a long way from DK condescendingly putting Diddy on Nightwatch. As for Dixie, she would make a return as a playable character a few years later in Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. While they're all celebrating DK's birthday, another group of troublemakers known as the Snowmads attempt a hostile takeover of Kong Island. So alongside Donkey, Diddy, and Cranky, Dixie brings her versatile ponytail back into the series for the first time since Donkey Kong Country 3. And for the first time in the Donkey Kong Country series, a playable Cranky. And once again, I have to acknowledge the Super Mario Brazas movie. When Mario journeys to the Jungle Kingdom and has his little face-off with Donkey Kong, we get a brief glimpse of Diddy alongside Dixie and Swanky in the crowd cheering for DK. Now, while there's no clear details on the relationship between DK and Diddy in this universe, we see Diddy clearly is Donkey Kong's biggest fan once again. And in my previous Donkey Kong video, I covered some rumors about a potential Donkey Kong spin-off movie, but that's still yet to be confirmed. But if Nintendo and Illumination does decide to pick that up, I think we'll see Diddy and Dixie in the context of this whole new Mario universe they're building. Now I intend to get to the rest of the Kongs in the next video, like all of them, but there are a few Donkey Kong related comics that feature DK, Diddy, and Dixie in different scenarios based on the Donkey Kong Country series. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to cover those in a separate video, or maybe I can just read through them on a stream or something. But that will do it for the origins of Nintendo's power couple, Diddy and Dixie Kong. I hope you enjoyed this origin oracle. Please drop me a like if you did. And until next time, be safe. A prophet has spoken. <laughs>